Moving on to the next item, which is number 10, which is the Port Area Economic Development Update. And so we'll have presentations, I believe, from all three ports, Port of Freeport, Port of Galveston, as well as Madam Chair from yes, Port of Houston. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mark. Chairman. Members of the Council, uh, I'd like to shift gears a little bit to talk about some very exciting economic development updates in the ports area of the region, like the Chair just mentioned. Uh, after they present, I'll come back and talk a little bit about how the MPO is, is working to uh, uh, leverage some of these exciting developments and elevated attention for freight planning at the regulatory and legislative level uh, for the sake of the region. We're going to deviate a little bit from, from the uh, schedule you see here, the order, and we're going to start with the Economic Alliance Houston Port Region. This presentation was put together uh, by a committee chaired by Chairman Longoria, and I'll pass the ball to her to uh, introduce. Okay. Uh, with your permission, I'll just uh, introduce this topic from my place here at the table. Uh, I'm really happy to introduce Put your, mic put your microphone. Sorry. Presentation by the Economic Alliance Houston Port Region. When I assumed the role of Port of Houston Authority Chairman, I thought it was really important to engage stakeholders and interests from around the region. To get community input to the commission, I engaged the uh, Citizens Advisory Council, which I created. For business interests, I, I created the Business Advisory Council. And for transportation interests and business and in industry interests around the Houston Ship Channel, um, I thought it was really important to go to the premier chamber within the Houston Port Region, the uh, Economic Alliance Port Region, to help me put together a group of people that could help tackle these industry transportation interest, uh, interests that are so critical to our future. Chad Burke, its CEO, and Michelle Hunley, the COO, helped me put together this transportation task force that I chair. My co-chairmen are Todd Manette, who is the chairman of the East Harris County Manufacturers Association, and, of course, the mayors of cities along the Houston Ship Channel, many of whom I think are here today. You're going to introduce them, Chad. Yes, ma'am. Uh, with that, the other members of the task force, this is a really uh, important group, I think it's the state for of course, the Houston Authority, the East Harris County Manufacturers Association, Harris County Judge at Emmett's office, Harris County Precinct 2 Commissioner Jack Mormon's office, the Houston-Galveston Area Council, Bay Area Transportation Partnership, Baytran, the City of Pearland, the City of LaPorte, City of Deer Park, City of Morgan's Point, City of Pasadena, City of Seabrook, Railroad, BNSF Railroad, and the Port Terminal Railroad Association. This task force was formed to advocate on behalf of the very unique multimodal transportation needs of our Houston Port Region. We all know that efficient freight movement is critical to our future, not only at the Port of Houston, Port of Freeport, Port of Galveston, but to the entire greater Houston region and to the state. As you are aware, the Texas Department of Transportation Freight Advisory Committee recently released a draft freight mobility plan for public review and comment. That report projects that freight tonnage in Texas between now and 2040 will increase by a whopping 88%. Obviously, the importance of efficient freight movement must be addressed by aggressively planning for and finding <coughs> streams for infrastructure for the efficient movement of growing freight. With that, it is my pleasure to introduce Chad Burke, President and CEO of the Economic Alliance, Houston Port Region. Chad is here on behalf of the Transportation Task Force to present an overview of the unique challenges facing the Houston Port Region and to provide this body with some suggested projects and guidance to address these emerging challenges. Thank you for your interest in the ports of Texas and our unique transportation mobility needs. Thank you, Chairman. And I, I do, on behalf of the committee, I appreciate the opportunity to come and, and represent that committee here. Um, the uh, Economic Alliance, as the Chairman mentioned, is an economic development corporation that provides um, development services for the 12 cities in the region, um, as well as its 250 private member industry and companies that work along the Houston Port region. Uh, because of its manufacturing and export nature, 
an investment in the Houston Port region creates a great ripple effect of prosperity uh, throughout the greater Houston area. Um, dominated by the petrochemical industry and, and, and um, maritime and logistics, the American Chemical Council states that um, for every one job created in the petrochemical industry, there's a seven uh, indirect jobs created. Uh, the region's a key driver uh, to the economics uh, in our region, obviously, and the entire state, especially given the um, depressed oil prices that we're experiencing right now. As Chairman Longoria mentioned, uh, the committee was formed at the, at the behest of uh, the, the Port Authority uh, in conjunction with our mayors and our East Harris County Manufacturers Association, uh, those 140 plants in the region. Um, uh, we have several of those people here today. Um, I do want to point out um, Mayor Royal and Mayor Mouton um, that are in the audience, as well as Craig Beskett, who is our chair, uh, or is the, the, the executive director of East Harris County Manufa Manufacturers Association, and several others that are here with us, a few of which are obviously on the committee as well. Um, sorry, I got ahead. Can I go backwards? There we go. I, th I don't want to belabor this point too long, uh, but obviously uh, the, the region's significance um, is great. It is the largest petrochemical complex in the nation. It's the second largest in the world to Rotterdam. And once we complete the, um, uh, the growth, uh, the capital investment that's happening in the Gulf Coast and here in Houston, it will be the largest petrochemical complex in the world. The other note that I'd like to point out uh, amongst all those fantastic stats there is the very bottom one. It is the number one container port in the Gulf Coast um, and not by a small margin. That number only um, is anticipated to increase. Moving on really quickly, this video shows the northeast corner of Beltway 8 and Highway 225. Um, and it's just an example of how this region differs from other areas around the Houston MSA. It's got a very unique mix of commuter and freight traffic uh, with population growth of 3,000 people per week. Uh, that increases the number of containers that we import. Uh, on the roads, as well as demand for goods, and those demand for goods subsequently increase the amount of freight uh, that we get. So we're, we're running through a really uh, serious growth cycle um, of adding freight to the region. According to the 2010 HGAC Goods Movement Study, um, which was based on 07 data, there were 20,000 trucks a day in the greater Houston area, the MSA, 10,000 or half of which were up and down the east corridor, the east side of the Port Regions corridors. Um, currently, truck counts show approximately 25 to 30,000 trucks per day. That's conservative, um, and, and we, uh, we anticipate huge growth, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, there we go. Oops. We both hit it. We both hit advance. There we go. And then we both hit it. There we go. I got it. <laughs> Ratio. Some of so the committee identified um, several projects that were um, – uh, that have already been uh, approved. These projects are fantastic. They begin to expand our network, but simultaneously will um, will create bottlenecks in the region. You're probably very well, well aware of these, but I want to point out the Beltway 8 bridge improvements, um, basically doubling the ca capacity of Beltway 8 over the Houston Ship Channel. Scheduled uh, goal and completion in 2021. Also, the Beltway 8 widening uh, from Highway 225 South to 146, another key corridor, uh, again, basically doubling the size of that of that um, avenue. Uh, again, that one, goal of opening in 2019, two really good projects that help our region out. And then finally, um, uh, a third one is the Seabrook uh, State Highway 146 expansion. Again, a key evacuation corridor and truck route that, uh, that will be basically taken, um, taken out of stoplights and put into uh, expressway. Um, these projects are on the books, uh, and they begin to uh, flesh out the needs that we have in the region. Uh, this slide, I just wanted to put this on here to, <coughs> to get the scope of the increase in production of polymers and resins in the region. As the largest uh, complex in the nation, the Houston region will see the bulk of increased resins production happening here along the Houston port area. This huge increase in production of polymers and resins has not yet come online. Uh, the, the first facilities to begin production, we'll, we'll, we'll see those come online in 2016 with the bulk in 2017 and 2018. So we still haven't yet seen their effects. 
There are over $40 billion in announced capital projects, expansions in our region. Um, the American Chemical Council projects an increase year over year of capital projects uh, over the next three years. So the, the, the announcements and projects um, are not slowing down. Industry partners have projected that there will be um, between a 50 and 100 percent increase in trucks on our existing networks. network. Best case scenario then put something close to 45,000 trucks per day on our roads, and we're certainly not equipped for that. These are the proposed projects that the that the that this committee um, has, is bringing before you. Um, again, the industry, the port, the mayors have identified these specific projects to alleviate, alleviate some critical bottlenecks in our region. Beltway 8 um, and Highway 225 flyovers. Um, I will show you on a map here momentarily, but um, you heard the two projects with Beltway 8, the bridge and the, the, um, the south section from 225 to 45, both doubling in size, but yet we, we, we still do not have um, approval to be able to get on and off. That intersection that I showed you where all the trucks have to stop at, that is in the middle of those two projects. Barber's Cut Flyover. Um, again, uh, this is at Highway 146 in the Barber's Cut Container Terminal. Um, again, this type of project has been proven very successful at Port Road uh, at 146 with the flyovers on and off to get the trucks off the road at an expeditious manner. Um, and this would be an, an also a, a, a great project. And then the Third is the, the um, State Highway 146 expansion from Spencer to Port Road. Again, we've created a bottleneck. We've got great lanes coming off of 225 and off of uh, the Hart Fred Hartman Bridge, and it narrows down to two lanes um, in between the two port terminals with um, the bottleneck there. Fourth, you'll see there just a, a um, uh, project listing, which is to – increase awareness and priority on at-grade crossings throughout the region. There are approximately 900 at-grade crossings in Harris County of the top 25 at-grade crossings with the highest vehicle minutes of delay. Um, this is the indicator. Uh, eight of those, or 32% of them, are in the Houston Port region. Another project or, or yeah, another project that this group strongly supports is the I-69 bypass or port relief route via 146. It only makes sense uh, to run that route on the east side along 146, which ties directly into the other improvement projects that we are promoting. Just a brief look at this map. You can see uh, on the top there is the Beltway Bridge over the Houston Ship Channel. You can see below that is that intersection that we referred to that needs the flyovers getting on and off of that once that project, because it flows directly into the approved project of Beltway 8 widening headed south. Similarly, at uh, Barber's Cut uh, Boulevard, you can see that we have uh, multiple lanes coming off the Fred Hartman Bridge, and then uh, it narrows down. Uh, we can use that as a flyover, and then below that, you see the widening that needs to be done down in Highway 146, basically eliminating bottlenecks in both of these locations. Finally, our solutions or recommendations are, are two-pronged. First, funding for the proposed recommendation recommended projects creates a cohesive regional transportation system and addresses the need to accommodate this unprecedented freight growth that we expect. Policy changes are suggested to ensure that freight mobility is given a greater priority in the future uh, for evaluation and funding of projects. Um, uh, finally, I'd like to mention uh, that uh, something that just happened last night, uh, the Houston um, Harris County Mayors and Councils Association passed a resolution last night supporting transportation projects in the Houston Port region. I think, and that's not just on our side of town. That's that's all around the greater Houston area, Harris County. Um, the Port region does drive our economy. Uh, we are at, at a serious advantage uh, to other areas of not only the nation uh, but the world, and so a lot of money is being spent in our area as we speak. Um, and uh, our success and our future ability to move and compete at a global nature is dependent upon us raising the level of priority and identifying these projects in the region. So with that, I, I say thank you, but definitely uh, appreciate your support and time here today. Thank you, Chad. Thank you, Chad. Are we going to have a presentation now from Porter Galveston or Porter Freeport?
Report. It's all right with you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Mike Wilson. I'm the director of economic development at Port Freeport. <clears throat> Uh, this presentation I'm offering today is actually about 30 minutes long, but we're going to do a micro report and uh, just get to the meat and potatoes really quick in the essence of time. Uh, regarding the first uh, slide this morning, this is our state-of-the-art ZPMC container cranes. I was chatting with someone earlier, and uh, when you look at these, every time I look at these, I'm reminded that in the Port of LA Long Beach, these kind of cranes have been around a very long time. So back in the late uh, 70s, like 76, Steven Spielberg's design team used these cranes as a base design for the walkers you see in the Star Wars movies. So every time you go by our port or other ports in, in Houston, it has a bunch of these. Think about those walkers, and yes, I'm a geek, and I can't wait till the movie opens in December. Um, this terminal has an operational depth of 47 feet currently. Uh, it will be 50 feet deep when we do our deepening and widening project. Uh, and we are looking forward to uh, continued growth here. Most of our business is a uh, line of business from Central and South America. And uh, our, our growth in projects and offers for projects continues to grow dramatically. We're going to go all the way down to the slide that lists the projects themselves almost to the very end. You'll see BASF at the top of it. Keep going. More. A lot more. Yeah. Now, one of the things while we get to this slide is uh, we're a for-profit governmental entity. So when you look at our budgets, keep in mind that about 70% of what we spend in a year, that's it. Go back. There you, uh, there you go. Right there. Uh, is profits from our leases. Only about 20 to 23 percent a year, based on actual expenses for a given year, goes into uh, is tax dollars that goes into development. We have lowered our tax rate for the uh, constituents in Brazoria County every year that I've been there, and that's 16 years. We're very blessed to have approximately 29 billion dollars on that board of active projects with our partners along the waterway and inside Southern Brazoria County. Uh, we have another. 16 to 18 billion projects that are in the works uh, actively under negotiation and or pending uh, site location selections and other things in, this, in uh, Rosoria County. And when you look at that last line there, our valuations are around 20 to 22 billion today and they could grow as much as to 60 billion in about five to seven years. A lot of these projects that you're looking at here, in fact, all of these projects that you're looking at here are already signed and already in various stages of construction. If you'd like a copy of the entire presentation that we offered, uh, please just touch base with the guys at HGAC. I, I appreciate Chairman Longoria's comments earlier. Uh, this region, and in particular Southeast Texas, the four ports that are here, uh, Texas City, Galveston, Houston, and Freeport, handle 100% of the freight for the state of Texas and the three, uh, 30 million people that are in a 500-mile radius of this place. And we have freight going all over the United States. And so this is one of my soapbox things, and Aaron knows that. We're funded like any other MPO. Think about that. But we have all the responsibility for all of the freight for all of Texas for the most part. And with that... I thank you very much for the time and the opportunity. Have a great day. Thank you for your presentation, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, next presentation will be with the Port of Galveston. In the country. Good morning. I'm Peter Simons. I'm the Deputy Port Director for the Port of Galveston. Next slide, please. Very quickly, uh, the port for most of its uh, life has been a private port until 1940 when the citizens of Galveston purchased the port from the uh, prior property landowners. So today we are an enterprise utility of the city of Galveston. Most importantly, we receive, uh, we have no taxing authority and we receive uh, no direct tax support with minor exceptions for grants. So we fund our operations from operating revenue, our capital projects and our operations from operating revenue. 
from uh, loans that we uh, take out and from public-private partnerships, and we'll see examples of each of those in a minute. We do on occasion uh, receive grants from the city, and I want to recognize in particular um, Dustin, the city of Galveston, for contributing a million dollars towards the vehicle processing center project. For us, that represents about 8% of the cost of the project. Without that support from the city of Galveston, it would not have been possible. Next slide. This is a uh, quick summary of, of uh, where we stand in terms of 2015 revenues. As you'll see, the top three cargo segments are cruise, grain, and roll-on, roll-off. We'll talk about that in a minute. The way that we raise revenue, just like other ports, is we're a landlord port. Um, ships pay to dock at our piers, and we also collect uh, fees based upon the cargo that moves on to uh, our wharf or pier. We call that wharfage. Next slide, please. So we'll talk about the, uh, the four major categories, cruise, uh, grain, roll-on, roll-off, activity, and um, fruit. Galveston is North America's fourth largest cruise home port. We measure cruise home ports by the number of, number of embarkations. This year, we will embark approximately 825,000 people. Next year, on track to embark between 845 or 850,000. As my boss likes to say, that's not bad for a city of less than 50,000 people. The three largest the, um, cruise home ports in North America are all in Florida. We have year-round service from Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines and Carnival Cruise Lines. In the upper left-hand corner, that's a picture of Disney Wonder. She arrived two weeks ago uh, and is doing seasonal sailings um, out of Galveston. She actually arrived earlier this morning. Um, she's our... Um, She's a newest cruise line, although for us, uh, we have a prior history with Disney. She'll be, she signed a contract to do uh, sailings for three years on a seasonal basis. We're beginning a, a period of change out of ships. We have three Carnival Cruise Line ships, the Carnival Magic, the Carnival Freedom, and the Carnival Triumph. Um, Carnival will be replacing the Magic and the Triumph with larger vessels starting uh, mid-next year. And Royal Caribbean's Liberty of the Seas arrived from uh, New York last Friday. Um, she is actually a, an upgrade in terms of size of the, from the Navigator of the Seas. She carries 500 more persons in what we call a lower berth capacity. That's significant when you consider, obviously, that the vast majority of passengers who come to the cruise terminal come by car. Uh, on a Saturday and Sunday, if you multiply 825,000 by two, you can get an appreciation for the uh, volume of traffic that's on the state highway that provides access into the cruise terminal. We're working with the city, TxDOT, uh, and our own uh, internal reconfiguration to try to facilitate um, the passage of cars along Harborside Drive. But I have watched on a Sunday afternoon out of my office, and it takes you two hours to go 13 blocks on Harborside Drive. It's a major issue for us, obviously, from a customer satisfaction standpoint. Nevertheless, the cruise lines love Galveston. They love the Houston-Galveston region, um, and, uh, and so they are committed uh, to long-range projects with the Port of Galveston. Second um, is grain. Uh, Archer Daniels Midland operates the uh, grain terminal uh, in the port. Um, all of that cargo, which is principally sorghum and, and hard red winter wheat, arrives by rail. The port has access, immediate access, to two Class 1 railroads, both Union Pacific and Burlington Northern Santa Fe, have switching yards on Galveston Island just outside the port complex. Third roll-on, roll-off cargo, you can see a picture here of uh, John Deere farm equipment arriving by rail. Um, we also ship uh, what's called project cargo, so emergency vehicles are a good example of that. Uh, construction equipment and used cars. Um, we... Uh, um, receive a number of uh, used cars from military members that are repositioning from overseas. There's also a number of late model used cars which are being sent to Africa and the Middle East. The big news on roll-on, roll-off um, is that next month uh, we will open a vehicle processing center for BMW. I'll show you a picture of that in a minute. Uh, the third week in January we welcome our first chip of BMW cars. In 2016, we will move 33,000 vehicles through the port. Finally, Del Monte Fresh Fruit, the lower 
left-hand picture, year-round service between Galveston and Guatemala. It's a combination of container and break bulk um, trade. It is a two-way trade. The containers go back actually stuffed with paper, and that's what makes most of the cardboard boxes that you see fruit arriving um, back in the United States in. Fruit that comes into Galveston goes all over the Midwest and the West Coast, particularly during the melon season, uh, and it all goes out by truck. So particularly during the melon season, we'll see uh, almost caravans of trucks which depart uh, Galveston headed um, uh, surprisingly out to California. But again, all the, the fruit uh, from, this from this general area um, from Del Monte all comes through the port of Galveston. Next slide, please. Very quickly, a uh, picture of our Cruise Terminal 2 expansion project. It's a $15 million project. We borrowed money from uh, a consortium of local banks. Uh, we're expanding the existing cruise terminal, which is the white structure on the right-hand side, with a 60,000-square-foot, uh, two-story building that will be used for Embark operations. Because Liberty of the Seas is 100 feet longer and 22,000 gross tons <laughs> navigator of the seas, we also have to spend about $2.5 million upgrading the moorings um, out, out on the wharf. Next slide, please. This is a picture of the vehicle processing center that we, we are building with um, Wallenius Wilhelmsen and BMW. It's a 19-acre uh, facility. The white, the white structure in the middle of that slide uh, is the vehicle processing center itself. It's a 35,000 square foot building. It is effectively a small uh, car factory. They can do everything except build the car from the ground up that can be done in the factory. So major modifications, repair of damage uh, from a, a, a vehicle that may be damaged in transit, all that can be done there at that facility. Uh, we'll have a grand opening for that sometime in the April time frame. But again, our first ship will arrive the third week in January. Next slide. Um, finally, the other major project that uh, we're working on nearing completion is the downtown transit terminal, working actually with the city of Galveston. Uh, all buses coming into the city uh, will call at this facility. There's also a three-story uh, parking garage on top of the structure, as you can see, that will be used ultimately for cruise passenger parking. Next slide. Uh, next slide. Next slide. Just go ahead and uh, go through that. Just very uh, quickly, the total uh, e economic impact for the um, for the Port of Galveston. Um, we've commissioned a new study. Um, these numbers are uh, three years out of date, obviously, but they're also significantly out of date in terms of the, the type and volumes of cargoes that we have uh, seen um, since 2011. Um, and I do want to emphasize that in 2013, uh, a study commissioned by the Galveston Park Board of Trustees found that cruise activity generated $43 million in spending in passenger onshore spending. That's not just in the city of Galveston. It reflects people staying in Houston in hotels and the transit to and from the airport complexes. And um, cruise activity generated $11.3 million in tax revenue for federal, state, and local governments. So cruise activity and Port of Galveston activity in general is not just a Galveston County Center um, activity. Next slide. And so I thank you for this opportunity to provide really a brief <clears throat> overview on the Port of Galveston. Um, I look forward perhaps in the future to being able to come back and discuss in a little bit more detail what we are doing in the Port of Galveston. Uh, we are committed to working with HGAC and appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. As you can see, Mr. Chairman, these are critical needs, uh, ones that we here at HJC want to confront, want to uh, pay more attention to. In early 2016, we'll be rolling out what we're calling tentatively the Port Relief Route Study. Uh, also, we've called it the I-69 Relief Route Study to help us understand better and get a uh, more current picture of what's going on on the ground, the key elements of the regional economic supply chains that are critical to this region, and uh, also uh, uh, identify with the help of the local stakeholders a, a universe of improvement strategies that we could make, ideally selecting one and uh, identifying funding for its implementation. I'll just mention in closing, uh, in addition to appreciating your attention in this matter, that uh, the, this study is a recommendation not only from the Regional Goods Movement Study that HGAC did, but also the recently completed uh, Texas Freight Mobility Plan. So thank you again. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much.